Today on this old house, wow. I feel like I just stepped into a <laughs> Naughty Pine Hall of Fame. It's everywhere. A relic of a sewage system. This is a cesspool. Hey, Roger, how's it going? You want to talk a little landscaping? I think we ought to talk a lot of landscaping. There's a right. lot to be done here. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. How excited are you guys to see that? Extremely. Right? You're going to have to choke down some dust first, though, before you get to that part. <laughs> oh, a yeah. long way. Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. So what are we doing here? <laughs> I don't know. We got a, I got a call from Jeff. He says he wants to look at a house out west on a ranch or something. So I thought we should look the part. <laughs> yeah. All right. So tell me, do you think these chaps make my butt look big? No. But the burritos do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I found a badge. Badges? You don't need no stinking badges. You feeling lucky, punks? Kevin, neither one of those lines are in this movie. Really? <laughs> what am I thinking? Obviously, you're not. Hey. What the heck are you guys doing? I got your method. Something about going out west to a ranch. I said a ranch house in Westerly, Rhode Island. <laughs> I was close. Hey. Get in. It's fun to get dressed up, though. Hey, what do you got in your mouth there anyway? I didn't know you smoked. Mm. Cinnamon stick. Oh, really? Yeah, it tastes good. Got another one? I might try one. Hi there. And welcome to a brand new This Old House project. We have got our little ranch here behind us. And Jeff, boy, we really are in Western Rhode Island. <laughs> That's Westerly. <laughs> All right, well, appropriately named. Yeah. So there's the project house. Yeah. Are you ready to tackle this? Yeah, we're ready. We got demo crew on the way. Nice. You ready to get to the basement? It always starts there. Let's sure. Let's go meet the homeowner, see what's going on. And have a look inside. Yeah, it's a great little house. Hey, Shayla and Scott, how are you guys doing? Hey, hey guys. Hi, Tom. How are nice you? Nice to meet you. Good, nice how to you see doing? you guys. Wow, you bought yourself a gem here. <laughs> we did, I mean, I think so. Yeah, well, I hope so. I mean, that's the only opinion that matters. Yes. And right, now you guys are gonna raise your family here? Sure. Mm hmm You have kids? We do, we have a daughter who's five, her name's Mollen, and Emily is 17 months. All right, and you're obviously not living in the house yet. You're nearby, though. We are, we're about four or five miles away, right downtown. Cool. So what are your plans for the house? What do you wanna to do to it? Well, we'd like to add a second floor to this part of the home and take advantage of some of, some of the water views to the south. So no more ranch for you guys? No more. About how many square feet is the existing house right now? It's about 2,100 square feet. And you're going to add? About 1,000. So 3,100 square feet, good size house. Yeah. Okay. So kitchen specifically gets a pretty significant updating, I presume? Yes, absolutely. So we're looking to uh, expand the kitchen this way, removing the cabinets. and. Uh, so we're looking to add a second floor on this section of the house to take advantage of some of the views to the south, the water is out in this direction, and expanding the footprint on the first floor to take advantage of some space here and expand the dining room. Nice. And with this wall down, it's really gonna make a difference. It is. You get rid of this beauty, I call dibs. You can have it. All right. <laughs> Let me show you guys the rest of the house. Okay. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. And we're going to be taking these walls down. And Tommy, this is the wall that we spoke about. In the kitchen? In the kitchen, so yeah, it really is gonna open up nice. Absolutely, so that wall is gonna go down and we're gonna extend the house out, incorporating in a little extra space here to gain some room in the dining room. Lots of glass on this wall, open it up to the backyard. And then uh, over here in this area, built-ins, 
step down into the living room area. What about the ceiling in here? Are you going to leave it at this height? We're going to raise it a foot. Oh, wow. That's great. Wow. I tell you, Tommy, I feel like I just stepped into a, a ranch museum, the Naughty Pine Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's everywhere. Well, you know, this was a shipbuilding community back in the 30s and the 40s, and the captains actually liked the interior of the boats really nice. But they, they wanted them built in pine, but they didn't like all the knots. Hmm. So they would separate the wood and collect and use the good wood in the boats. The shipbuilders would take that scrap home, and they would use it in their houses to make paneling, ceilings, and even cabinetry. And so that's why you see a lot of it. Huh. And so what do you guys think about the knotty pine? <laughs> Are you going to keep it? We'd like to keep some of it and use it in some of the areas of the home, but for the living room area, we're going to brighten it up a little bit. Yeah, okay. Uh, and what else do you do to the room? Because it's a pretty big room and gets a lot of light. Yeah, we're, we're going to be removing the fireplace from this wall here and what? opening up this wall. Really? So make it even bigger? Even bigger, and this will allow us to look through to the front of the home and also back towards the kitchen area as well. Front to back views. Yes. Front to back. Wow. And Definitely. you get great light. I mean, uh, your windows will be updated. Do you sort of get access to the backyard? Yes, there'll be a slider there and we'll step out onto a patio. Yeah, sure that makes sense. Wow, that's going to be a dramatic change. And I mean, I can see Naughty Pine everywhere. <laughs> it keeps going. It, it does. It continues all the way down the hallway here. Let me show you. Was there anything left for the ship? Well, <laughs> you know, the Naughty Pine was cheaper than plaster, so that's why they did a lot. So right now, this is a full bathroom. We're going to change this to a half bath and a laundry room. Okay. And then in here right now is a bedroom, but it's going to turn into the office. All right. All right. And then right here, we're actually going to put a doorway. It goes this way. Yes, the door is going to go right here. Mm -hmm. And right now, this is the master bedroom, but we're going to change that to a full bath for the bedroom we're adding in the back. And then this current bedroom is going to get incorporated with this wall and this wall coming down, and it's going to be one big space. Oh, nice. Wow. And so that takes you to the end of the existing house? Yes. yes. And, and we don't bump out any further? No, no. we're going to stay on this footprint. Oh, wow. You saved the best for last, the <laughs> avocado green carpet. Wow. wow. Hey, Jeff. Hey, guys. How are you? So Hi. I'd like you to meet Lori. Lori Hi. is our in-house designer. Nice Lori. to meet you. So she designed the house. We started by capturing all the existing conditions, and we put it into uh, computer-aided drafting. And then we've actually added some rendering software so that we can really get a sense of texture and different elements of the house. So the, the really nice thing about this capability is that we can actually now create a video with all of this input in there. You can see now we've, where we've added the second floor. So you've got a gambrel style roof, although it's just on the front side of the house, you're keeping the one story roof on the back side? Yep, this section right here will remain the same roof lines, but we've added the gambrel on that side. You can see the roof line, the gutter line is different. Yeah, because we came up a foot yeah. for, the, for the new section. How so excited are you guys to see that? Extremely. Right? You're going to have to choke down some dust first, though, before you get to that part. <laughs> oh, a yeah. long way. Notice that there was a stairway to the second floor. Yep. Have you done anything on the second floor design yet? At the top of the stairs, we have a large hall with the railing, a desk area, and a seat. Then off the hall is a master bedroom, master bath, walk-in closet. Then we have the bedrooms for two of each of the children and a large uh, guest bath. So three bedrooms, one for everybody. The whole family's up on the second floor together. Just what you wanted? Yes. yes. Yeah. Speaking oh, of family. Oh, hi, kid. Well, well, well. Look at this. How are you? So who are we looking at here? This is uh, Emily. Mm -hmm. Malin. This is Malin. Malin. Good. Malin. Very nice. So you guys have got to get pretty excited about the changes coming to this house that's going to be made for you to, to hang out and grow up in this house. You guys get excited about that? Nice yeah. new house. All right, well, it looks like we have got ourselves a plan, yeah. which means we have got to start getting to work. we got to start doing some work. Demo. All right, good. Time to get started. All Thank right. you, Lori. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank, Thank you, Lori. Nice Thank job. You. Thank you. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. I'm in Long Beach, California, 3,000 miles from our project house. But this city has a unique connection to the ranch house that we are renovating. 
Today's ranch houses, which got very popular in the 1950s, were inspired by homes like this, the Ranchos of California. This is Rancho Los Alamitas. A building has been on this site since the early 1800s. These rugged structures house the workers and families on the cattle ranchos that popped up as settlers from Mexico and the United States moved to California. Fast forward to the 1930s in Southern California, and a handful of forward-thinking architects led by Cliff May started to focus on what they called livability. They wanted to build houses that were about how people lived rather than how they looked. Cliff May's vision became known as the California Ranch. In the building boom of the 1950s, May's ranch house took off. It started in a development here in Long Beach called Rancho Estates. The developer built 700 houses using May's modern design, and that style spread across the country. Sarah Locke is an architectural historian, and she lives right here in the neighborhood. Hi, Sarah. Hi. So tell me, what makes these houses so popular? Well, these houses really appealed to the masses because it was unpretentious modernism. And at a time in the post-war years when there needed to be a lot of housing built, this was a great solution. And uh, how were they actually built? It was actually a factory built model. Mm -hmm. So there were five panels and closet components that were built off site and shipped in. And they would first pour the concrete slab, build the post and beam structure, and then they would insert these panels to create different variations. Oh, so it wasn't a single design. You could move the panels around to create a different look. Exactly, and you could rotate the plan on the lot too to create additional variation. Yeah. So what are the details that makes this one so historical? Well, the, the ranch house form really was one story and had a horizontal emphasis. Um, it has a low-pitched roof with wide eaves that shelter the interior from the sun. And rustic materials were used, like the board and batten siding that you see here. Um, on the interior, you had walls of glass that faced the rear yard and the inner courtyard. And the exterior space was used just as much as the interior space. It was about informal living and a carefree flow of space. So can we see the inside? Yeah, let's go inside. All right. This house was built in 1954, and until recently, an original owner lived here, so it retains yeah. many of its original details. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's a very informal plan. All the spaces are open to one another in the main living mm -hmm. area, and the structure is exposed. You can see that there's this main beam that runs through, and um, you can see the, the panels and the, the post and beam structure of the exterior as well. Right, and you have the rafters sitting on top of that. It's a very simple frame when it comes right down to it. And, and the, the glass really makes the house very light inside. Yeah, it is. There's lots of glass, including the Claire Story windows. So the living room area flows right into this dining space, mm -hmm. and it's connected to the open kitchen that is shielded behind this low wall mm -hmm. here. Um, everything was included in the kitchen, including the washer and dryer. This is very unusual, it seems. Yeah, it maximized efficiency. Um, the birch cabinetry was built off-site and shipped to be installed. It included these sliding doors that also maximized space so that there weren't any doors in the way when you opened the cabinets. Great idea. Originally, there were Formica boomerang countertops in various shades and Western Holly appliances. The homeowner switched out to an electric cooktop here and then replaced the countertops with ceramic tile. Put a nice curve on the end of the counter. You don't want to bump into a square corner. Exactly, and it's reflected in the shelves below as well. Some really nice details in this birch kitchen. And right here we have one of the house's bathrooms. Wow, this is a bright space. <laughs> it is, and all the hall bathrooms were blue. This is an original cast iron tub. It was one of the selling features of the house. Mm -hmm. An original toilet, and we have the original flooring here. Right, it even looks like there's a front panel here that's also metal. Mm -hmm. Was there only one bath in these houses? Each of these houses had two baths, so all the hall baths were blue and the master baths were either pink or green. Hmm. Clever. Each of the houses featured a Jack and Jill bedroom that's divided by this pre-built closet component. One side opens to this room and the other side opens to the other bedroom. <laughs> that's clever. And there was no need to have an interior wall here. They just used this mist-like glass that wraps around the closet. But glass between two bedrooms, that's very unusual. It brought in additional light and you also get a lot of light from this um, four panel window and the Claire Story window above. Right, well that's one of the nicest features about these houses I think is that they do have a lot of natural light. But this is pretty much an original, right? It hasn't been changed very much at all, but I, I can't believe that people haven't modified some of these in renovations. Yeah, let's go see one that's been updated. All right.
So this updated version of the house has much of the same interior definition of space. You have a dining area here, a living area, and then this would have been a fourth bedroom here that had an accordion wall so you could um, adjust the space as needed. And the floors are actually very similar to what you saw in the original house, and, um, but they're a newer vinyl composite tile. And then over here, the homeowners have added additional interior space. So in the earlier house, there would have been window, there's windows and doors here, so they took those out and added in a nice big space. Exactly. So the kitchen retains its birch cabinetry, and it has the same sliding doors we saw in the other house. It doesn't have the boomerang counters, though they have um, replaced those with Formica that's sympathetic to the original design. Mm -hmm. I don't see the washer dryer. Yeah, they've cleverly hidden the washer dryer behind these closet doors. Here. Yeah, look at that. But they still kept it close to the kitchen. The hallway bath in this house has been updated. It was blue in the last house, and here you see all the fixtures are in the same location, but they're now nice and bright white. And in here, this is the Jack and Jill bedrooms that we saw in the last house. So they simply removed the closets. Yes, they did, and the glass that surrounded them. Um, but you still have these great four-pane windows and the Claire stories that bring in lots of light. So 60 years later, these houses are really popular. They are. They sell at a premium compared mm -hmm. to surrounding neighborhoods, and there's a wonderful community here and Cliff May enthusiasts across the country. Thanks for showing us the California Ranch. Thank you for visiting. My pleasure. Richard. Hey, Jeff. This, oh, yeah. this place is built like a tank. Oh, I know it. I know Amazing. it. So this is 12 inches on center, which traditionally we see 16 inches right. on center. And look at the detail with this diagonal bridging. They sure did a nice job. And these all connect together, add to the whole structure integrity of this floor system. And really make it a system. These are really important. I've been told 100 times by Tommy and others that you need this to be the whole system. The plumbers don't want this. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. But you've got a really solid deck yeah. to build off of. And check this out. Diagonal underlayment. That floor underlayment is two, one by six tongue yeah, and groove at the angle. on a diagonal. Somebody really wanted this place right. to stand up well. So notice this too, concrete residue. They might have used it for the forms, forms and then put it on the floor. Absolutely. And this was what, late 40s, so it would have been right when plywood was probably just coming into this country. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's really fun, well it? done. So we, we have no problem going up and adding on to this structure. All right, so you're going to take this building and make it a third again as big, right? Yeah. So what they have now is an oil-fired boiler. There's water inside this. Oil burner right here, fires into here. It has two zones. Now you're going to add a third floor, so right. and it's got baseboard that goes all the way around. Right, right. It also has a tankless, which means this thing sits hot all, the, all day long to make a little bit of hot water for faucets. So we probably could reuse this. You know, it's probably big enough because you're going to make the new house tighter. Yeah. But we got... You're going to take this chimney away, right? Exactly. It's gone. So we'd have to revent this thing a different place. Yep. And so, you know. I mean, this thing's not that old. It's the newest thing in the whole house. What year is it? Well, it installed in 09, so. So if it's 09, we could probably repurpose it, find a way to get it in somebody's sure. good hands, you know. It, it, so we probably want to think about getting rid of this. You know, a house like this, if you're going to renovate it to this level, we can't do just baseboard, we have to think about having heating and air conditioning. Right, Got to have right, air conditioning. So right. probably want to do a ducted system with a couple of air handlers, two or three different places, maybe a little bit of radiant floor heating for floor warming yep. too. Sounds great. All right. So oil uh, yep. connects. The ground connects to the new tank over here. So oil tank does look pretty new, so I have to repurpose that. Sure. Water supply, copper line coming in, looks like it's town supply, I assume? Yeah, yeah, municipal water, but the, the, the town still uses wells for the water Local source. Local wells, so, okay. Yeah. Right. Now, some parts of town have sewer, this part does not, so we'll be on septic. So the drain line comes out here to a relic of a sewage system. This is a cesspool. This is the basic uh, tool that's been around for hundreds of years. It's a honeycomb-shaped chamber made out of either brick or fieldstone, this looks like. It's about six foot wide, eight to 10 feet deep, and liquids and solids come in here. Liquids leach their way around, and solids take time to break yeah. down, you know. So I can't imagine that Wesley's gonna allow us to use the reuse. No, with this level of renovation, they're gonna require us to design a whole new septic system, and we're gonna abandon this. Okay. And don't forget, we're half a mile from the ocean. So we've got that contamination going on, plus the town still uses wells for its aquifer, for its water supply. Yeah. So we want to eliminate that contamination. Okay, best news I've heard yeah. today. 
Hey, Roger. Hey, Jen. How's it going? You want to talk a little landscaping? I think we ought to talk a lot of landscaping. There's a right. lot to be done here. There is, and I don't think the homeowners have had any time to think of the outside. So no. there's a lot going on. You want to go check it out? Yeah, let's give them some ideas. Okay. Now, we have to remember that we're going to have a landing right in here, so it has to be nice and big and safe to get us down to the front door. I know. It's a great transition point, so it would be nice to have maybe some large, natural slabs of stone. Yes. And then also up here, some of these foundation plantings are great. We could reuse these. Like, this is a viburnum. We could definitely pop that in somewhere. And then traveling down this way, I think this holly's seen some better days, yeah, right? Yeah, I wouldn't waste any time on that one. But just clearing this out will alleviate so much space. And then down here, there are a few really great yeah. rhododendrons. We'll take those and a couple of rows of Sharon I saw, bring them over here and fill in all these openings along here to give us a nice private entrance. That would really complete this hedge. That would be great. And then here, it's just grass right now, but it could become a perennial bed. Design. I say perennial bed. Perennial bed would be great. Let's take a look out back. All right. Out back here, Jen, we have some really nice features. On the side, there's an evergreen screen. In the middle, a big oak tree. And in the back, there's a bunch of brush. But if we cut out that brush, we'd have an old historical wall back here to look at. Come along a little farther, we clear it up. And then we have a flagpole right on that edge over there. Right. That looks like a perfect area for a kid's play set. So I think referring back to the plan starting up here, they have a deck that is written into the plans, but who knows, maybe we could introduce a, st a sunken stone patio uh, all in here. And then another thing for phase two over here, where they're going to put in a garage. So they're going to need to think about access from the garage. They need a pathway up here, up into the house. Work, yeah. yeah. So, but they definitely need access. Yeah. And so let's go have a look at this flagpole area because I really think it's going to be a great play area for the kids. Okay. All Here's right. A peek. So Jeff, this is really going to be quite a project. Yeah, yeah, we're excited. Uh, we've got a really great design, a really good transformation. We've got wonderful clients. We're ready to get started. Yeah. We just have a little demo in front yeah, of us. Yeah, we have a little demo. Now, these cabins are built pretty good. You know, they make them off the wall easy, but they may not. What are you yeah. going to do with them? So we've been doing some work with Habitat for Humanity as of late, and from their purpose, this stuff can get reused. There's a new home for this stuff, and it, it helps them, and it helps us to get, to get some of it out of it. So we've got Cliff here from Habitat for Humanity. Jeff, good to see you again. Cliff. Tommy. Hey, Cliff. Good to see you. Pleasure nice to meet you. So you've had a look around the house and made a list of what you're taking? We have, Kevin. So in addition to what we have here in the kitchen, the appliances and the cabinets, we're going to be looking at the bathrooms. We're going to be looking at a couple of the pedestal sinks, toilets, and those type of things. There's an oil tank that we're going to be taking out, too. And then in addition to that, there's a bunch of knotty pine over oh, there. Oh, that oh, we're, you know, We'd love to get our hands on some of that. I know Jeff has got some plans for it, but we'd love to do that. Yeah, go so easy on that, that stuff. And, and who is we? So we, we have a, a volunteer deconstruction crew, a regular volunteer that come in every day and they work for uh, and volunteer their time with Habitat. Oh, that's nice. So they'll be coming in today and working well, on the kitchen. Well, I take it we're going to start with the cabinets and the countertops and get all this stuff out of the way. Sounds like a plan, Save what we can save, right? That's right, exactly. Hey, Thank guys. You. Hey, guys. Now, hey, guys. Welcome. Welcome. Ready to start work? Hey, they're, they're all loaded and yeah. ready to bear. All right, so. Let's go. All right. I don't know. Thank you, Cliff. I'm going to go over here. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.